Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, Konami's official simulator is here. Everyone is playing it, and you should be too. But, before you do, these are 10 quick things you should know to make sure you give yourself the best start in this brand new game. Number 1. The starter deck choice doesn't really matter. First of all, the two starter decks that you didn't choose can be unlocked by doing missions, so you can get all three anyway. But you likely won't be using any of the cards in any of them for very long either way. I chose the Synchros because it has three MSTs, or Mystical Space Typhoons, a card I could actually see myself using. You can also choose the Link Summoning deck for the good removal effects, or the Dragon deck if you're an old school player. Number 2. How card packs work. When you start the game, there will only be three packs in the shop. Stalwart Force, Revival of Legends, and the Master Pack. We'll come back to these. First though, we'll go over how you unlock the other packs. Master Duel has a system called Secret Packs, which are basically booster packs centered around specific themes, usually one or two archetypes. For example, if you wanted to build a Lyralesque deck, there's a secret pack containing the Lyralesque cards and also the Luna Light cards. How you unlock these secret packs is by obtaining one of the SR, or UR cards, contained in them. So, take for example the Lyralesque pack. If I were to obtain Lyralesque Bird Call, the secret pack containing Lyralesque cards would be unlocked but only for 24 hours. This is not as big of an issue as it might seem, because you can always get another 24 hours by obtaining another card. But wait just a minute, if these secret packs contain specifically cards for that theme, how do I obtain a card from the theme to unlock them to begin with? Well, the best way is to craft them, but you can also obtain them from those three packs I mentioned earlier, the three packs available at the start. The first pack, Stalwart Force, contains staples like Pot of Desires and Twin Twisters, cards you'd use in a variety of decks. It also contains cards for meta archetypes like Tri Brigade and Sky Strikers. The second pack, Revival of Legends, contains anime archetypes like Blue Eyes, Stardust, and Code Talkers. The last pack, called the Master Pack, contains basically everything, whereas the first two packs drew cards from a total pool of 80 different cards the Master Pack pulls from a pool of nearly 7,000. So you could open from any of these to get the initial card to unlock the Secret Packs. Or, the better way is to craft them. Which brings us to point number 3. How crafting works. Master Duel has a very fair and non-predatory crafting system, in which you can turn 3 cards you don't want into any one card of the same rarity. Master Duel has 4 rarities. Normal, Rare, Super Rare, and Ultra Rare, or N, R, S, R, and U, R. These should be familiar to any Duel Links players watching. What separates this game from Duel Links, though, is you can actually craft any card you want. For example, if you wanted to craft an Ultra Rare card, it would require 30 Ultra Rare crafting points. You can get 10 U, R points by dismantling a U, R card you've obtained. Sometimes you'll obtain a card with a special shine to them. These cards can be dismantled for 15 points, rather than 10. You cannot dismantle the cards the game gives to you, however, such as cards from starter decks or bundles. You can dismantle any card that you pulled from a pack or crafted. You can also obtain crafting points from completing solo missions or the pass. Speaking of which... Number 4. Buy the gold pass before playing any PvP duels. The gold pass costs 600 gems to purchase and lets you earn various rewards as you play, including 600 gems. So, if you want free things, you should definitely be purchasing it. Notably, it grants you crafting points. The reason I say to buy it before playing PvP is so that you can immediately start earning the rewards on it. Number 5. Not every card released in the TCG is on Master Duel. This means if you're a TCG player looking for a way to practice, this will not be the same format. No Sword Soul here. It's missing Burst of Destiny, which has the aforementioned Sword Soul archetype one of the two most represented archetypes in the TCG's competitive play. Also absent is Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, a hugely prevalent card, and also Flanderies, a decently prevalent archetype. If you are more of a casual player, Duel Links player, or a returning player, 
This will not accurately reflect the real-life metagame in its entirety, so just keep that in mind. Number 6. Master Duel has its own ban list. Similar to the last point, this ban list is neither the current OCG ban list nor the current TCG ban list. It's very far from the current TCG ban list, and, in my opinion, a lot worse. Aside from the objectively worse differences, there are some things that make it not necessarily worse, but certainly unreflective of the TCG. Nadir's Servant, a crucial card in one of the best TCG decks, is at 1 instead of 3. That's another one of the best TCG decks which is basically absent from the Master Duel meta. Number 7. How the Toggle System Works This is more important to Master for competitive players, but even if you're playing casually, having some understanding of this is important. Toggle determines how frequently the game will stop and prompt you for an effect activation. With Toggle set to on, it will ask you at every single opportunity. This is necessary sometimes for competitive play, but annoying to have on all the time. Having it set to auto, the game will only ask you in certain instances, often when something big happens, such as a monster being summoned, but usually not in cases such as the standby phase or leaving the main phase. Having it set to off, the game won't ask you to activate effects at all. This is useful so that your opponent doesn't know you have a response. You just have to be careful not to miss your chance for an activation. Number 8. You should do solo mode. Certain solo mode missions get you powerful cards like Regeki, Monster Reborn, and Reinforcement of the Army. They also give you a couple thousand gems. You can click on the missions in solo mode before you do them to see which rewards you'll get. Number 9. You should buy the bundles. There are currently three bundles available, each giving 10 packs and a free card. The free cards included in these bundles are Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Lightning Storm, and Solemn Judgment. All three of these are staples, Ash Blossom especially. The other two cards are more specific, tailored more for decks looking to go second as the case is for Lightning Storm, or for decks seeking to go first, like with Solemn Judgment. But they'll both see wider use if Konami implements a best of three and side decking format. Number 10. Complete one deck before trying to build others. If you're looking for competitive decks, you can look up the best TCG OCG decks and then make sure that the required cards are legal in Master Duel. Or, with enough time, I'm sure there will be Master Duel specific deck guides. Make sure to let me know in the comments if you want to see those from me. Even if you aren't looking to be the most competitive player, I recommend focusing on completing one coherent strategy first, so you don't run out of resources spreading yourself thin. It's also probably a good idea to focus on staples first, such as the aforementioned Ash Blossom, Max C, and Upstart Goblin. That concludes this list. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, and also let me know your thoughts on Master Duel so far. On this channel, I post lots of competitive TCG content, and will also be making more Master Duel content. So, subscribe if you want to see any of that. Thanks.